Hello people, welcome to another episode of the show. This is our first interview of season four. I know it's it's been a long while, but yeah, we're here with our guys. Our co-host Valentine is here on, on deck with us. <laughs> and we've got our first our first guest for this season. His name is Ali Abubat. Please the round of applause for the man. I'm supposed to have some effect. This guy is a cinematographer, a basketballer. In fact, he's worked with notable celebrities over the years and he's blown up his portfolio. So now we have to be calling him Oga. Oga. Hey, what <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, thanks for joining us, man. How are you doing? How are you doing, my guy? Uh, I'm fine. Bro. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a while, bro. Yeah, we, we've been planning this. Valentine, I've not got in my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> May I reach Nigeria first now? <laughs> See this guy. <laughs> no, I didn't give you federal warning. <laughs> you you call me for airport, Tabi. You can't be I threatening swear. him. You cannot be doing that on the show. Please. This is this is live. This is live evidence. What what is that? No, that is not a threat. It's a friendly reminder. <laughs> oh good. Man. Well, yeah, let's yeah. let's get it off, man. Um 2022. Just ended the way yeah. we expected it to end. At least for most yep. of us, we had our eyes and lows. But for you, what was the biggest takeaway from from 2022? Um, I think my biggest takeaway is the fact that I started my 2022 pretty well. I I planned it towards like ending of 2021. That um before at least middle of 2022, I should be able to have changed a lot of things that I feel like I thought I wouldn't even do before, right? So one of the first plans is to make sure I get admitted into film school and also to actually put my portfolio and my craft ahead of anything. So I, I think it really worked for me and God's too kind. I, I came out one of the best in my film school and then I was able to like <laughs> oh, 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 oh. So I was able to like network also. I met with like a lot of great creative guys that till today we have like a very strong bond and partnership. So my biggest takeaway is the fact that I was able to like set a solid work for myself, a foundation that I think I've been trying to avoid all this while. So that's so, I think that's my biggest so in the long shot, you should enjoy it with it too. Let's just put it like uh, that. I, I tried to go with the positive side of it. Right? What, was, what was the negative? I want to know everything. Um, you know, I like Ambe Bo. Yeah, true though, but see, oh, oh shit. The <laughs> negative side of Ambe say, bro, um, as much as you did try to succeed, bro, it is really tough, bro, because there are times that person goes just wake up, man, and you go look at yourself, like, oh, no, do I really want to even do this? Is there like, is there like something I'm not doing well? Or is it that um the the earth himself itself is against you? And then when you look at it again, it's tough, bro. I won't lie to you. Really tough. Really tough. But we just have to, you know now, as usual. That is that the same up. thing we we Uncle Valentine they talk the last time we had him, like <laughs> adulting is hard. <laughs> bro, it is. Trust me. I, I spoke to Valentine like a few weeks before um, before his um, induction. Should I use the word induction to flat out? I think we spoke, we chatted briefly and then I asked him yeah, a couple of questions and stuff. Yeah. So, now part of the struggle way, even last year, but I'm not trying to let it weigh me down. Now, why, if you notice, I just said the positive side of, side of last year, which is more important to me, right? Very true, man. We just got questions yeah. to keep up. But I have this question. I know most people don't know this, but I'm going to ask you this question. Who is your favorite person on the earth right now? On the <laughs> earth right now? <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, um. <laughs> See, Valentine, you people are on the same level. Me, I'm not I'm not in the I'm not in the frame. Oh, what exactly are you trying to talk about? <laughs> It's just, a, <laughs> it's just a question. I'm just putting it out there. I'm just sprinkling the salt around. Hey, eh, well, bro, my favorite person is Shogomongo. 
Como, como, no, no, Valentine, I'm sure Como will understand. I'm about to throw that answer back to him. Como, mm -hmm. all, all these years that you and I have been together, I have always called you and you, Como. I have never <laughs> mentioned any name. It is still Como. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. exactly, it's still Shogomongo, right? Hey. I'm single on this on this podcast. Everybody knows I'm single. I don't. Nah, bro. Um... Excuse me. I wasn't even talking about if you're in a relationship or being single. <laughs> Who bro. asked you? Uh -huh. Do you get? I was only throwing the answer back to you. And right. I'm sure you. Way to put me on this spot. Sure... No, no, but I'm not bro. <laughs> Valentine is the <laughs> Valentine is the only one that that came out of 2022 with a significant. Yes. Yeah. So we have no. to like we have to. No, no, bro. Respect, respect. Don't, don't, uh, do, 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 what is this, man? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> no, but it's good though. It's good because uh, if you guys look at it from way back, we're boys, bro. We're boys, right? We see we see a lot of these people, and then we look at them and be like, "Oh, well, these guys are old. They are not really doing anything. We don't see them come to the basketball lazy. They can't run and stuff." But then, if you look at us now. I am very sure we still run, but we can't run the way we used to run 15, 10 years ago. Right. Yes. And too. then all hard. those stuff that we've been mocking on the court and making fun of those people is what we're doing see now. This and see this one. We see will see like... See this one. Yeah. Valentine, he's a better Ali, guy. Yeah. <laughs> Ali, I don't agree. I don't agree. <laughs> I don't agree. Not nah, lie. Ah, you, it's not lie. Not lie. You deceive yourself. You know, it's funny. It's funny. No, no, no. It's funny you say this because I'm much faster. I'm much stronger, much tougher than I was five, eight years ago. Like, I can't even compare to five years. Eight. Like, if we're talking about the next 15 years, okay. Yeah. But I thought you say, a young That's why. Is he a young boy? That's why. Yeah, yeah. You people are the old. You people are the veterans. <laughs> Don't put me in your category. Don't put me in your category. <laughs> you people have played finish. You have played the old Nigeria finish. You have played everything. I don't wow. blame you. I don't blame you. Is Need it me bro. I have. I don't blame you. It's not your fault. I will still catch you. <laughs> no, no worry. You will still fall for that bracket. Ah, can you imagine? <laughs> eventually. Eventually. Throwing shades on us. <laughs> yeah, man. But yeah, um, your upbringing. Let's, let's talk about you growing up and how you were able to pick up yourself as the the adult that you are at the moment you know you've lived in different parts of nigeria guy yeah, i never i, I never see person way travel past you speak your but speak Aousa. it remains more if i speak Ibu. everything yeah now so, the language why i regret yeah, i will learn be that too uh, we, and we know why you even regret because you know them evil girls yeah. there, like my like my baby mm -mm -mm. <laughs> that is why valentine is going to kill me one of these days <laughs> I just need to catch you. That's all. Hmm. That's all. Well, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> uh, talk, talk to us about your upbringing. Hmm. Well, I, I, I have this discussion with almost everybody that like I've met and like tried to know me personal. Right? I cannot. I cannot talk about my own bringing without like mentioning my elder brother because I I think after our primary school I moved I moved on with my brother I didn't stay with my parents again I was staying with my brother when he was just a junior um, he was just like a new officer in Nigeria Navy right he was just um how would I put it he was staying in, like a single room um just foam and fun, right? But you wanted me to like learn quick and then see life in another angle. So he told, he asked me to move, like move, move inside with him. I lived with him basically from my GSS one back till I was done with secondary school, and I think before I even went to the university. And bro, going not going up with your father and mother is another thing entirely. Hey, <laughs> bro, like my brother, they wake up in the morning, see, in the dress, they go work. You don't wake me, guy, half hour. 
go bath, they go school. Then I go reach school. You get, I go see like my mates where, oh, mm-hmm. this guy and I, papa bring her, or this guy and I, mama. You know, I, in my mind, I was like, oh, this guy's not really flex. So, I, but, but still, I had, the, I had the freedom. I had the freedom. And then the trust was there. The, the bond was there. So I didn't really miss my parents that much because every weekend, I and my brother would sit down and discuss a lot aside school. Mm-hmm. I was able to express myself. I think that's one of the reasons why, till today, everywhere I go to, I try not to even hide myself. I don't put myself in a particular name. Bro, I will come out, I will talk. And then when I see things that are not right, I will say it. So... I go to school, these guys, ah, my dad, my, my mom, my dad, my, <laughs> see these niggas, maybe only my dad, my mom, bro, <laughs> you did, like, you did go house, you did go house, you know, they go check food, say, your mom, see, don't cook food mm-hmm, for you, mm-hmm. like, you don't need easy which mama put our own branch, buy food, carry go house, chop, <laughs> bro, <laughs> and then, it got to a point that, Beans and bread became like my favorite because after school, like this, easy, bro. After school, it's easy to carry, <laughs> guy, because you don't tire, you carry school bag, like, bro. But I owe it to my brother, he taught me a lot, like, he taught me life itself because I could still remember how I used to like leave the house for days and not come back. My brother would find me, she find me, finish. I would expect say this nigga go beat me. No, he would speak sense to me. This thing what you want to do, who they stop you? Why you no know, calm down? Why you did excuse yourself, leave house, at least go school. So all those things are part of the things where like really build me up to this level where I get that kind of discipline. So so anytime I go back home with my mom, we discuss and stuff. Me and our clothes, but it can't be like the way I and my brother are. We did talk. I and my mom we do talk like every day on the phone, but bro, it can't be like yeah, bro. bro. I, I'm really grateful for that, bro. It's wild that you brought you brought that up. Like I think for a lot of our younger generations nowadays, yeah, we we don't see that side of life, like At all. having to having to struggle. For everything you get, especially yeah. at a very, very early age. Yeah. The, the Gen Z. The Gen, Gen Z, Z. quotes. <laughs> yeah. now, actually, I'm actually scared like for the for the next generation. There's a, there are a lot of things you see on a daily basis, and you're like, are these are these children okay? Are you sure you're normal? <laughs> like it's just wild nowadays. And with without those kind of experiences, you can't navigate through life the way you should. At all. See, see Valentine, man. Valentine, Valentine is a, <laughs> is a, is a, is a, is an adult. He thought he was still a young boy until, <laughs> until, <laughs> you know. It hit me like a wrecking ball, though. It hit me like a wrecking ball. Mm-hmm. Bro, Those experiences build us up. Bro, he did, he did, he did a lot. When when was the first time like you you really got into sports? Was it during this phase where you were still with your brother and you were living away from home, or it got to a point that you said, "Let me just do something that actually keep me busy"? Ah, uh, like I like that question, right? So the thing is, I did my primary school in Lokoja, right? So I've been exposed to sports since I was like really small, but not the kind of exposure that kids of nowadays are getting my kind of exposure to sport is the type that you leave your house through the back door mm-hmm. to go and play, go and play, to go and play. Go and play ball <laughs> and then you are so so now the thing is you are so dusty you need to find your way to clean yourself before going to the house mm-hmm. and then you need to find a way to enter through that same back door enter the house sometimes you have to starve to sleep because you don't even want any questioning, right? You don't, so, you don't think when this guy don't be cook. You don't think. Bro, no, no. But as, I, as I'm saying it, it's a ring bell for your ear. <laughs> now, something similar or something close, you said don't do, right? Yeah. So, in my primary school days in Lokoja, right, I did go, this river Niger thing, now, now is like a scene if you grow up in Lokoja and you never knew how to swim. Mm-hmm. 
nobody we never had a swimming coach we, we went to a river that you just dive in you don't know what is inside because the, that water is so uh it's so it's so clean that you cannot see anything in your front do you understand and there are stuff inside <laughs> <laughs> bro you get so all those years i was doing i was playing soccer right in my primary school i was my games prefect who is calling nobody is calling me i think it's my network can you guys hear me yeah we can hear you loud and clear yeah, yeah so i was my game I, I was my game games prefect so immediately after primary school i moved i moved in with my brother in Lagos, and my brother was like okay i went to play soccer once and then that place is called evan square in the meta area so the thing about evan square is that bro that pitch not just Igbo smokers and Igbo dealers, right? So you they run, smoke they go everywhere. <laughs> like if you inhale smoke, you don't need to smoke before like you. Inhale. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> so my brother, my brother don't like make a good that kind of place. So he restricted me. He suggested lawn tennis, right? So I started my first day. <laughs> Come on, my first day in stadium to play lawn tennis. I, I they just talk to coach finish. I don't gear up, don't warm up and stuff. I see me can go pee. I carry that kid, follow back. I just go see coach to see court. That's ox basketball. Mm-hmm. They were then there was there was AZ, Lacon, Soji, big, big, big guys in 07 then, right? So I just go there and I see coach to see. I did go rebound ball, I can't dribble. I had my racket to go on my back. Coach Tosi was like, ah, have, you know that kind of hype that they used to drag it to sport now? Ah, you have good and do so. Come and play basketball. Bro, that, that was, was it. it. <laughs> uh, no, just like that. Uh, Bro, I'm telling you, like, my, my long tennis racket was right behind me. So AZ and I think it was, I can still remember, it was AZ. Uh, sorry. Um, yes, Afiz, but Afiz, he was shooting. So me, I was rebounding. And then in the process of rebounding, I was dribbling. I have never played. I only see it from distance. I do I have never had interest in it. Mm-hmm. Coach Tosi was like, ah, you have good arms. It's just that small hype. Come, let me teach you basketball. And he taught me triple threat. And that was all. It's funny how he loved us started basketball. Very funny. Because very funny bro with, with me my my brother played a little just thinking it. and when i was in <laughs> secondary school I, you always do all those nonsense sports where you play after school you get around people there was this not court in, in my you know, secondary school command or job every time we we'll just go there everybody throws the ball we shoot it anyhow we we'll try to just have fun basically but it was when i got oh, that to means you at least you you had close encounter with well, basketball. Yeah, bro, yeah, I actually did have close encounter. Bro, bro, not even a distance cousin to basketball. That's that's the interest I had. I never <laughs> knew anything. I never knew anything. I only know of my kid Jordan, but I me. Oh, after school in that same secondary school, GSS one period yeah. and stuff. After school, bro, we did go play soccer for back. We did enter railway compound with uniform. <laughs> play soccer. Well, I thought you know how to play football. Football. Uh, do you know how to play football? I was, I was, I was, I was um, planning on going pro playing football. That was exactly when I switched. <laughs> so, like, I was really, really good. I was really Basket- good. basketball is that bad. That's the word. <laughs> um, now nah, basketball is a lot harder. <laughs> basketball is a lot harder, and it's toxic because once you get into it, bro. You don't want to leave. Right. Um, I don't enter. I don't enter. It'd be like um, initiation. Yes, no, now. Enter, enter. Bro, not <laughs> you know, true. You know if you look back. Very true. Um, Quick one, guys. The yeah. timer might go off in about 5-10 minutes. So I'll, right. I'll create another link so we join in. But let's continue. Right. Yep. This, is my, this is my fault. I should have upgraded this thing since. I'll have to do it after this. Can you? Spend that money. Spend that money. Wait, 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 wait. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with this one? <laughs> but yeah, 
we can't we can't really talk basketball when it comes to Lagos without bringing up Roe Park. I can't even, like True. it's funny. I can't even remember when I met Ali, but I know I met him at Roe Park. I'm hundred percent sure that I met him at Roe Park. It is. It <laughs> is. We no, you know, we had that. We had that. We had that um, rivalry. Yes. Yes. Mm. So this is so this was is the experience. Me, you, this is the experience me, that you really needed to pull into. I might wish I met Valentine a lot earlier. Hey, see, yeah. would have showed you <laughs> like I wasn't. I was ah Ro- Valentine. Ro- you go, go see Shaggy. <laughs> Rock Park was like um was like Rocker Park that time was like the legends. They were you just hearing right. about the legends. The uh, Roy Park, yeah. like Roy Park, what's going on there? You just be hearing like oh the legends are there. The best <laughs> shooters in the country. The best things in the country. I'm like. Ah. Boy, you know, as as an island at that time, it was really far. So before we go to Roe Park, it had to be for something. Right. There were right. like those competitions. Right. Uh, yeah. W- w- with Roe Park, you grew, we basically grew up around a lot of guys there, along around a lot of coaches. We have Coach Mancini Lai Alimi, which is to me one one of the greatest coaches in Nigeria right now. You've got the older yeah, guys yeah. who actually trained us or coached us one way or the other how to play basketball. Now, playing in that kind of setting, how much did it impact your development both as a basketballer and also as a man? Um, well, I think this this is going to be like the first time a lot of people are going to know about this, right? Um, when I started basketball, I was like the smallest I was like the smallest guy in the stadium, not age alone, height wise, mm-hmm. age and experience. I was like the smallest guy. And then I had the privilege to like play with guys that today, when they talk about them, people will be like, ah, I used to idolize this guy. I used to... In my mind, I was like, oh, yeah, cool. Right? But me, I've played with them. I had the experience. Mm-hmm. I still remember when they opened the Lupinju basketball court. The other Warriors, they packaged it that year, right? I was wearing Hawks jersey and it was, it was literally dragging the floor. They had to like fold, fold. You know that that year, they were wearing extra, extra large shorts. And, bro, mm-hmm. that was how small I was playing basketball. Now, I may be the same person wearing Hawks to Coach Tosin and Coach Charlie's rivalry. <laughs> I was I was I was that small, but I had the mind and then I was playing like I was I, 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 I won't say I was playing to an elite level, but I had the mind to play with those guys. Yeah. Like I could literally play, I, I could literally play full court with those guys and I, I would still survive. So um fast forward to when we all now started moving to Rope Park and the development basketball team started, right? Mm-hmm. I used to go to Rope Park. I don't get to play set at my age then. So we just go to Rope Park. Those big guys will finish playing. When they take a time out, we are quickly playing like a one-on-one. Before, you know, before the end of 10, maybe a minute running time, yeah. we played like three sets of one-on-one. And then one day, my senior walked up to me. Then I used to drag some of my friends, Schweibs, Shola Lash Wives, Elder Brother, Shamsin, Iban Martins, and others. I used to drag everybody to like go for guys, let's go and play like set among ourselves. So um one day Mancini approached me and he was like, um let's let's work out together. He is going to coordinate us, right? So we did, and he already knew I had like experience a bit. At that my age, I already had experience among among all these guys. Yeah. I was the more experienced person. So my senior would always say, ah, Ali, take the lead and stuff. That was how the youth alive and whatever thing started. Wow. Right. So my senior will fix the time. I'll call every I will make sure I look for everybody. Make sure we're all together. We were no more than 10 when we started. But we were pushing and stuff. And then people started noticing, oh, these guys, every day we're practicing. Everybody now wants to join and stuff. So to to say that Rope Park has not contributed to my adulthood in life because it did a lot. There were a lot of veterans there. I I I could see how they behave. They were like um, mid level veterans. They were like the aged veterans, and they were mm-hmm. we still had like younger veterans there and there. 
all these guys put together, you could you can easily pinpoint people's character and behavior, and then you can now it is now left to you to choose which lifestyle you want to live yeah. among all these guys. So go for a lot of options. The way um this guy said it, Valentine said it's like it's like a rocker park, right? So that's how I see it. it so it taught me a lot. It, it taught me a lot. When I look at the aged veterans um character and be like, oh, this particular person, I don't like the way they do. Ah man, I don't even want to live my life like this. Yeah. I threw I saw it from that angle and then I was able to use it. And then some are living that same life that me, I don't like this person, they like it. Mm-hmm. So I think I chose the best part of it to myself. I don't know about others. And then it's really working for me. And we can all see that it's really working. And now that you're cashing out, you're collecting money from everybody. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, you see, you think I don't see your status the other day? Do you know what this guy said? He was had a message with one of the one potential clients. <laughs> The auntie wanted she wanted a shot before um paying signing contract signing contract no it was about contracts the thing is you gave me a brief of what the job is like and everything and then you said you're going to send me the contract when i get home so in my field as a qualified cinematographer you don't just um go into deal with somebody with mouth alone sometimes when it comes to deals like that so you wanted me to be your permanent server i was like okay cool no problem but I need to see the contract before I would even agree or not. So, and then I expected you to send the contract to the The next day you sent me a message, yo, what's up? Can you avail yourself on Friday? I was like, okay, am I getting paid for this one or what? I'm like, no, they are bringing me in. I was like, no, excuse me, I don't Exposure. work like that. <laughs> Bro, the thing Exposure. about the address, everybody wants to use you. <laughs> oh my God. I saw that in our oh. world. <laughs> so, so the good thing, come on, the good thing is, one thing I like about myself is, if somebody teaches me something and I learn from you, if I have problem tomorrow, I will go back to that person that taught me that stuff and be like, this thing I did, is it right or wrong? The people that taught me cinematography were my friends, but I never treated them as my friends. So my film school lecturer was the first person I sent that screenshot of that conversation. So, and he was like, I like how you responded diligently and then I like the approach you gave and stuff. It was not disrespectful and that is the right thing to do because it clearly looks like she wants to use it. I'm in my head, I was like, okay, there we go. <laughs> Bro. We talk. Anyway, let's um, move on, Jerry. Um, yeah, yeah, we're talking basketball and you playing different at different yeah. levels, real part. Now, yeah. growing up in that situation and, you know, meeting up with or seeing, like you mentioned, a lot of guys that people now look up to, like, I want to be like this guy. You played against the likes of Charles Bassi, the um, yeah. Martins, the Banus, those guys that have yeah. left the country and have made a name for themselves. Out Not, and, and even um, Charles Bassi, Martins, Promise, all these ones were like later stuff. Yeah, like, they were the younger even, dudes. <laughs> yeah, 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 because the, even the ones that I played with in stadium that were like some of some some of them were like my age category and stuff that moved and they are still doing well for themselves. Yeah. Like Prince, Prince, it's, cra- it's crazy, you. Prince. I swear, guys. It's Prince. If you look, if you look at, if you look back at that set of guys that used to play at. Um, with Raptors, Zion, yeah, the yeah. Warriors, those guys really, they were the first generation of athletes from Niger that really went out and yeah. did good. Like, they went to they, they the were, US, they went they to were. Philippines, they went to they all were. these they dominated. And they dominated. That's crazy. What happened to that structure? Yeah. What happened to the structure? Should I, let me tell you what happened to the structure. <laughs> People started using... You're talking about... You're talking about guys traveling to the Philippines. That's a huge deal. You're talking about guys sure. traveling overseas. No, they didn't even go deal. to the Philippines. Direct. Like they played from college. They played well in college. Yeah. Signed their contract from college to like top leagues in Europe and Asia. Do you understand? The thing is, a lot of people got greedy. Uh-huh. That was what happened. A lot of people got greedy. You Greed know, became with, part of it. With Nigerians, you you see that okay, this guy is going to be a promising player. 
And it got to a point where coaches began to instigate issues with, I don't know, with within themselves. So this guy is my player, this guy is my player. I was doing, I'm going to help him do this, I'm going to help him do this. And before you know it, once the player gets to that level, you you don't do what you need to do to actually help him succeed. But now you're trying to gain from the exposure he has gotten, the little bits okay. that you can stop. It makes no sense. And it still happens to date. Like there are a lot of it does. There are a lot it of does. organizations. Meaning it it's, up, it's crazy. Uh, Academies. In, see, in Nigerian, in Nigerian, <laughs> I think lately I've been like one of the biggest critics in Nigerian basketball. If not, I, even though I don't come out like right or say, but wherever my presence is and you talk about Nigerian basketball, I criticize it big time. I don't even try to like cover up for anybody, man. Once I know that, okay, this is your true color and you have shown it to me before, I won't hesitate to say it. I don't. Makes no because, sense. Yeah, because the truth is, I feel one of the things I'm mostly proud of is the fact that we, in our class, Homo, me, you, Bayo, like when I say our class, Indomie and others, yeah. right? I think one of my biggest things in our set is the fact that the bond we had was not just for basketball. You know? True. We never shy away from telling each other the truth. True. Right? We we tend to like encourage and discourage stuff that we know that will work for any of us. I think that's one of the reasons why most of us are still like really like cool and together. We are not trying to do any class differentiation because that's I think that's one of the things that happens in Nigerian basketball. Lots. It's always this class differentiation. Somebody wants to be a boss and the other has to be like a follower. Nobody's willing to grow the other person. Very true. I, it's, Which is... it's funny. It's funny to think that most of those guys have that at the top right now, especially in the Federation, they've seen the way organizations work in different countries. They, they have outside. and they are part of those organizations. Yeah, they are part of those but they don't do that there. They it's come crazy. here to do it. And but I think I think I think we won't really blame those guys that much because when you look at the category of people they are dealing with, right? Mm -hmm. You should look at the set of people they are dealing with. People that can actually challenge that um situation are either suppressed by greed. Or, or maybe poverty and maybe lack of exposure True. and their inferiority complex. True. True. A lot I would of like yes to... men. And that's Do you what understand? It's about a lot of yes men. Everybody's saying yes to this because they don't. Do you understand? When it comes to time for people to say no, they don't know how to say, they can't say it because they are scared. Yeah, that's true. It's because crazy, though. I swear, bro. I swear, I I had I had encounter recently with I think this recent festival that just finished, mm -hmm. and then I saw one of the basketball players posted that the Lagos State athlete bus will not leave because the basketballers have not been assigned a bus to go together, and they were protesting. So I happened to be on the Lagos State Basketball Association mm -hmm. group, right? So I saw it immediately. I took the videos. I went to the posted it. And then I, I said things about you. I was like, if we don't really care about us, how do you think other people are going to see us from outside? Man, big kudos to the president of Nigerian Handball Federation. I'm not trying to shoot. Oh, that man is that man is incredible. I'm anything. Como, have you seen how these handballers are living in Lagos? That man is incredible. I, like, I brought, Bro, even before I left Nigeria, what he has been able to say. That's what I'm telling you. People before you left. The country, people moving Bro, every time. Okay, that was before you left. Now it's, it's not about them leaving the country to play in another country. Now it is about them earning a jersey even in Nigeria, bro. Now, anybody that earns a jersey in Nigeria and both Federation is doing well. Even if they decide to package them, they are not paying them well. Mm -hmm. Let's not even go there. To me, they are still doing great. Way better These guys, when you see them every time, they are in shape, they eat good food, they wear good dresses. Not one particular jersey that one person is looking like the borrowed jersey for him, and the other person is like he had issues with the tailor, right? Everybody is wearing their yeah, own brother. jersey. Like, no, forget you your brother. 
that's exactly what I'm saying. Somebody is wearing his jersey, you know that, oh, okay, this jersey was made for this person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is how those guys are living now. So even if they have even if they have contracts about to play, they play club. But when it's time for national game, you see them running back. Why? Because there's a system that works. True. And then these are our same basketball people who still go there and still be drifting with him and doing big man shit. Bro, fuck your big man. <sighs> if you can't bring anyone up, then it's it's irrelevant. You ju- you just want to gather up followers. It's irrelevant. Honestly. It's irrelevant, bro. Yeah, um, transitioning from you know basketball <laughs> to cinematography, I want to to talk about that that process, the the good, the bad, the ugly, everything that you had to go through. Like, uh, because every one of us are transitioning. See me now. Who said I'll be? Who thought I'll be sitting down here hosting show? Eh? Who said I'll be doing? Hey, I tried hosting show. I'm not seeing your damn tech, bro. Tech, bro. bro. <laughs> you know. Excuse me. I need. I need to get my laptop. <laughs> you already know it now. Let's know where they sleep again. Yeah, because I'm almost tech, done. <laughs> yeah. So the thing is, um, okay, back in Alikma, right? Uh, um, that was I think towards 2015. We're going for private investing games in Afeba Balola in Ekiti. So I was taking like these random shots with my phone, and then oh, I was like, oh, these shots are coming out nicely. That way, I started off taking just pictures. Mm-hmm. So in filmmaking, we call them stills. I was taking pictures, and then I was enjoying the whole process. I went to Afeba Babalola, had good time, played basketball, met with my usual friends that are from other universities, did everything. Although we didn't qualify to a particular thing, but I, I, I did, I was part of the people that did the slam dunk contest. Uh, I swear, <laughs> fam, I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, for, wait, for perspective, let everyone know how tall you have there. Let's let, let. <laughs> uh, how tall is Tolani? Is taller than I am. How tall is Tolani? <laughs> No, no, no. I think we're about the same height. We're about the same height. For you to even use Tolani as the benchmark. We, we don't know. Have an idea. We don't know. We talk to us directly. How tall are you? List your height. Uh, it might be like five seven five eight. That's <laughs> if I am sure. Right? No, I don't I don't even hide Mr. Nick, I don't hide Mr. My height, bro. Because it has Mr. Never been my Mr. Height. Nate Robinson. Forget the guy is Tolani well, Robinson. Man. I see you with the help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um i think that was the yes sammy sammy was there he knew me so sammy did something crazy and then i thought after about the last one we went and brought ipad dunk 2015 that time ipad dunk was just me yeah and then he gave it to him straight i was like oh my guy nice one uh, I because, well i'm not on the same team i was playing for my school i was playing for his school but the bond that we had from lagos we've been playing back so even there i was doing some videos so when i went back to school I have a friend Sadiq that has a camera, doesn't use it that much. So I started playing with his camera, taking random pictures. I think my best picture that I took as an amateur was even his silhouette. Wow. Right. And then immediately after my graduation, I went to camp in Ocean State. I met like this crazy ass cinematographer guy, Dako King. And Dako King is like one of the biggest, most respected cinematographers in, in Nigeria. And okay. as at that time, he just finished from Redeemers and he was like the media director. So this guy has already been a badass cinematographer before even coming to camp. Mm-hmm. So I, I happened to be part of the OBS. And then there's my friend Bolaji too. Bolaji do, does photography, transition. Dr. King was teaching me the basic and then I was playing with camera and camp. And from then I was like, ah, I don't get what to do my life. <laughs> also, you, also you, 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 you knew or you thought that um um photography or videography or just um visual in general was going to be something you pursue oh exactly visuals not even photography i didn't even know which one i wanted to do but i was surrounded by people that do videos a lot and then it was a smooth transition do you understand i was able to like go into it direct and then it worked for me you know with 
with athletes, one thing that we've always talked about or people have talked about back home is the difficulty it takes for a basketballer or a footballer, someone that has played so many years to transition into doing something else. Because, yeah. you know, they've been around the this kind of lifestyle that it is practice in the morning, practice in the afternoon, eat little breaks here and there, and not being able to like sit fo- sit down in one spot and focus on doing something else. So it's, it's actually yeah. it's actually incredible what you've been able to achieve. And you now great they don't set given a certification by what it lost okay. Everybody likes I swear, bro. What it lost okay. No, bro, <laughs> bro, I think I think you 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 if you could remember, you are also part of this journey, right? Because I still remember you and I like planning a lot of things, even when I was not that good. But so when you look at it again, when you transition to teams when you transition from one um let, let me use like environment for example so because you and i live in the same house i told you that okay i don't want to be going to this particular place to eat food anymore but because you are my friend you're like okay but may i eat there why not stay too and eat and continue eating even if it will not last but rather than doing that you're like okay do yours and then we can always merge our food together and eat so that is you telling me oh sugar have fun now we'll run this together and even as i then you didn't even know how good i was but the only thing that 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 really worked for you was the fact that you trusted me, you believed in the process that I'm in, and then you didn't even see it as anything because you already knew the struggle. We're together. We know how it was, right? Right. So, so I think your people you roll with also matters when it comes to you making some decisions. Very true. Very true. Yeah. You said that now. I- now that you are in this media space, I, I asked Valentine yeah. the same question the last time yeah. we were talking. <laughs> yeah. The reason why I ask this question a lot is because I know in the next few years, you see, artificial yeah. intelligence is going to take, it's going to have its grip or its chokehold on most of us. You have to go through, yeah. you know, this this yeah. process as well. So, what are your yeah. thoughts of AI in the media space? Before you even go into it, I saw a video. And it was about human evolution, you know, how yep. we evolved from monkeys to now being humans. And yeah. the, the yeah. next phase of that evolution is actually being one with technology, where we'll probably yep. be cyborgs, robots, sentient, yep. whatever it is. Are we going to ever get to that stage where we'll, we'll start using our hands as, as wires, you know, flinging all this nonsense that we saw in Matrix? We, trust me, we will. We are getting there already. We are. I won't lie to you because if you look at oh geez, almost time for practice. If you almost, done, almost, done. Done. Yeah. almost yeah, so when you look at this, right? People okay, let me use that um this current trend that is going on, people creating their AI and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. You are now, one good thing about Africa is we don't read terms and conditions. Somebody is taking your database and then you are glad you are posting and stuff. But because I belong in this space, I know what is going on. I didn't want to do it. So what me I might end up doing later is be among those people that are going to be the back end mm-hmm. people that are doing the whole thing, right? So because when we get there, you will now want to buy for somebody to do it for you. Yeah. I will not be the provider. You get so this guy is already looking at monetizing. <laughs> But bro, that's the move. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I know we have to let you go very soon, but let's let's go into yeah. this uh, little game. It's called overrated, underrated, or properly rated. So I'm going to give you a list of names and you tell me whether this person is overrated, underrated, or properly rated. First, we'll start with MD, just five. Zion Williamson, yeah. what do you think? Overrated. <laughs> I'm not even going to argue with that. <laughs> Next. Well, time, what do you think about that? See, when you raise your eyebrows, no. <laughs> No, I I'm not going to argue it. <laughs> I, think, I, think it's, I think it's fairly rated. <laughs> okay. Look at Donchik. This one, Valentine is going to be pissed on what you say. Look at Donchik. <laughs> is he underrated? I don't think he's underrated. Because he's I that beg your pardon. And everybody knows. I, be- I not- beg your pardon. I beg underrated. your pardon. To me, there's no way he's underrated. He can't. That's what I'm saying. So in, in general, what I'm saying is um he deserves it. So it's properly rated, I guess. 
Okay, properly with the Donovan Mitchell, seventy-one points a few weeks ago. And for the for the rating that you get, it's properly rated. Okay, one more, yes. Jordan Poole, the, the the young the young boy in Golden State Warriors that feels like ah, he's the one. That's that's the next good from Golden State. <laughs> 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 My problem with Jordan Poole is his IQ in late game situations. Honestly, he will, he will outgo it. Yeah, I Let think him so. Enjoy the moment I, because I he has so. more experienced players helping him, but you you outgo it. Very true. Um, now yeah. our Nigerian people, the ones that you are used to, ah. we are very used. To. First on the oh, yeah. list, Emil Agba, Bolaji, the floor general. Funny how Bolaji, aside the. The way people see him outside the court, I have worked personally with Bola. There was a time that I used to do personal training with him that I was assisting to like do his shooting drill and stuff, mm -hmm. right? And I know the amount of work that guy has put in to become who he is today. He is properly rooted. I don't care. See, let me tell you this: just because I'm a hater, he's overrated. Just because I'm a hater. I know Valentine, no worries. I know the three. I know all of them. <laughs> like, I know three. Valentine, see my fist. Uh -huh. So, everybody is here. <laughs> he knows. Tolani <laughs> Buari, running me. Ah. Ha. <laughs> That's my goat right there. <laughs> you feel it's That's underrated, overrated, or properly rated? Tolani is nobody's mate right now. He's the goat. <laughs> <laughs> On the low, I think Tolani is, really, is really underrated because a lot of people still, even as he much as he has, he has achieved, a lot of people will be like, ah, this guy should be like that. But yeah. Now, because you know the show of <laughs> make the way game come, we will kill everybody. Always stepping up, man. For sure. Sammy Wan Wallo, Indomi. Is he underrated, overrated, or probably rated? Sammy has only played the Nigerian League once. And I don't know why that is, but I mean, he's, he's flexible. He's underrated. Because. He's underrated. Because I grew, I grew up playing with people like Sammy, right? Mm -hmm. And the same Indomi that I know of is the same Indomi that still plays. Right? And the reason we, we are calling him in the room is just few of us that know the meaning to today. Right? Next question. <laughs> Valentine, what do you think about Sam? Underrated, overrated, properly rated. What do you think? Sammy. Yes. Is it the Sammy with the beard? Yes, the Sammy yeah. with the beard. Not that not the Sammy that comes to to Kenny every time, not VGC Sammy. You know Sammy, Sammy that used to no, play. I, I, uh, I saw, I saw Sammy. I saw Sammy exactly. I saw Sammy, yeah. I saw Sammy is um. Mm, uh, what can uh, make I show for you? <laughs> Someone is going to get whooped, 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 whooped. Overrated. Um, do you see my face? Can you see my face? Is what? He said is overrated. Overrated. <laughs> Uh, Valentine, <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, bro. Man, I'm, let me I'm give you sorry. my style. Let me give you my silly style. <laughs> fuck you. Uh, fuck you, bro. Nah, nah. I'm sorry. I played. I played with Sammy a few times. Sam is extremely difficult. He's good as an individual, but if you're playing, if you're playing team basketball, I just think it's overrated at that point. That is why I feel like you don't know. It, it, I feel maybe I may I feel because it's the setting. If Sammy plays among yes. certain players, he's going to be the guy that wants to do everything. He wants to score at every possession. There. But when he plays with a group of other players, then he finds a way he to... He will play his role. Then, to... then my experience with Sammy is that, well, I mean, we, we played a few times and he's always been... <laughs> I mean, like, uh, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. No worries, <laughs> man. Sorry. Anyway, but, um, Shogomogo... Mr. Ali, thanks for joining us, man. It was a great one. With you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. Man. And to everyone that's watching this clip, <laughs> thanks for watching. 
you know what to do now subscribe like the video and share it do everything that is good for us to grow and what uncle you want to send money to us and don't forget we're planning to do a gofundme or fundraiser <laughs> Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. <laughs> Alright, my guy. Let's <laughs> 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 <laughs>